Hey, this video will have actual spoilers for the final level of Exapunks, so if you care about playing Exapunks, don't watch it. Okay, I really enjoyed this puzzle, it's crazy. He, the things you have to do are basically implement some incredibly basic beginner level computer science algorithms, but in an insane environment to do a thing with an insane premise. You have to hack your own brain uh, to map it out. So here's the brain layout, but this is actually randomized with each level, unlike other Xpunks levels. Um, so let's have a look at the start of this. I've got this m initial Xer here, XM, and X is a little robot thing in the game, uh, software agent basically. And you can see copies of this thing are being created, XM, 0, 0, 0, 0, etc. Because what you've got to do here is you've got to record the ID, like AR7, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and the nerve value, if there is a nerve, of each node. But this poses at least two problems. Not all nodes have nerves, and the map layout is random. So if you try to read a nerve which doesn't exist, your exit is destroyed. If you try to traverse a link which doesn't exist, your exit is destroyed. This is taken care of by using the REPL command, which basically clones an exa, uh, and this calling convention I've come up with which is basically a way to do blocking subroutines in Exapunks. This whole nonsense here, each of these blocks here is a function call effectively. Um, it is waiting for each and the exit to come back. So how it works is this guy here will do the spawning um, and it starts out by it starts out here at one because there's no backlink. Uh, it starts out by creating a clone. The clone then heads to a new node to see if the node exists. If it does exist, it returns to the original node, lets the parent, who is waiting, test MRD, test read communications basically, uh, lets the parent node exists. If it exists, the parent then waits for it with another read from the communications register. So this net one will now not do anything at all until this one comes back. And that process continues, forming a stack of subroutines, a call stack in fact. So we basically do a depth first search. And this is way more elaborate than you usually have to do in the game and very inefficient. But it's, I don't know if it's the only way to do it, but it's necessary the way I'm doing it. Because what you need is pairs of values, right? I'll be sending back the IDs and nodes here. We'll see them sent back in a second. Right, okay, so this one is sending back value AR blah 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 using this code. Um, copy XM, copy TM. Note how there's a separate commands. First it sends the node value back to this thing. Let's pull that out and we can see the file being built up here. Here, blah, blah, blah. And then it sends the neuron value. Those have, we cannot have concurrency here. Concurrency makes it, there's no way to do serialization which assumes some kind of pairs of data values sent together. Well, that's not quite true. You, you could come up with some schemes to implement that, such as storing both of the values in an exit and having it physically travel. Um, but that's really difficult to do given the random map. That's probably the next thing I would have tried if this scheme hadn't worked out. But anyway, what I did was totally serialize the communication using this subroutine-like mechanism. So that these pairs come predictably, not in any predictable order, but predictably the host name and the neuron value come out together. So we end up, after all, this loop runs forever, and once it's run forever, we end up with a file. Now, I say once it's run forever, how does that work? This copy of the mapping exa XM, this is the original one, this one will return home, like all the others, once it's done all this mapping. Right? So it, uh, it repels its nerve, it clones an exa to read that nerve value, and then it returns to where it came from, the original host here, Durst, my computer host name. Uh, then it sends the command, hey parent, I'm home, you can finish your subroutine. But there is no parent in this case. What we've got is a special purpose exa here, XS. And what this one does is kind of crazy. Uh, XS waits for a, uh, basically a callback. It imitates the calling convention, waits for a moment, and then it kills the infinite loop. It then picks up the file and sorts it. Because you've got to actually output the network layout in a sorted order because your robot patron is an idiot who can't sort. So this file is no good. So I'm going to run a bubble sort on it. Let's run that at, at full, not full speed, but you know, demo speed because it's way too slow to step through. Bubble sort is incredibly slow, and this implementation of bubble sort is incredibly slow. But doing anything else would be too difficult <laughs> because the Exapunks language is incredibly limited. <laughs> it's a uh, 
is way less limited than other Zectronics games in that you can have many instructions, but the actual instruction language is so much less capable than basically anything in the world. It's, it's a fun re restriction to have. So you can see this is repeatedly going through the list uh, and putting to pairs. And there we are, test run complete. Now let's just get back to the, uh, the bubble saw part of this again. That's the interesting. Well, the whole thing was interesting, but that's an interesting bit. The sorting routine is notably obtuse. Like this is jumping all around the place, copying values, etc. But this does do some interesting things, such as this, um, we're so limited here, we've got two registers, one of them general purpose, one of them overwritten by tests. So you note there's no tests in the swap bit here. We only have the one general purpose register, and we use that to mark whether any swaps took place during the bubble sort iteration. So start with a zero. Uh, and then if any swaps take place, they clobber the X register, not deliberately, but because they need it. And <laughs> so the check routine here, runs at the end of each loop iteration, is able to tell whether the list is now sorted. It's bodgy, but kind of not at the same time. Like, this is really a classic implementation of bubble sort. It's just that normally that's not a thing you should implement, and it's done in a thing which you can't implement things in well. But it works. The whole thing works. Let's go run fast. You see the layout changing? This is the crazy random bit which you have to deal with in this party. So my score is clearly um, not the fastest out there, but also some people <laughs> obviously had there's a very long tail of very slow implementations. I'm glad to at least not be in there. Size could be better, clearly, could be a lot better. I don't know how people are doing this with like 40 instructions, but obviously it can be done, some fundamentally different algorithms. And oh, my activity is not great either, I'm obviously making a shitload of clones in order to do all that network mapping, but it works. Algorithms.